Lenovo's compact mobile workstation, the P14S, is now in its fifth generation, offering a choice of Intel Core Ultra or AMD Ryzen Pro 8000 processors, dedicated graphics in the form of the NVIDIA RTX 500 ADA, upgradable parts, and a plethora of display options. Does this review model containing the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and Arc 8-core graphics offer enough oomph to power through your intensive tasks? Let's find out. <music> Starting at 1.61 kilograms or 3.55 pounds in a black chassis color, the P14S is not a light or thin laptop, making it difficult to handle with one hand for any length of time. It feels reassuringly solid with hardly any flexing on the keyboard deck and excellent protection from the display lid. The military standard 810H tested chassis is made primarily of aluminium to give it a rigid body. Lenovo have sacrificed some weight and dimensions to allow upgradability options. No more soldered on memory, which is great news. More on that later. There's a new communication bar atop the screen that boasts a high-res 5 megapixel camera and dual-ray mics for consistent audio-video calls. The lip allows you to easily open the display lid. If you follow this channel, this seems to be the common design cue for Lenovo laptops in 2024. Lenovo have done a good job with sustainability in the P14S materials and packaging used. Here's a list of the eco footprint of the P14S Gen 5. To open the bottom cover, undo the six captive screws and pry open carefully with the plastic tool. Inside is two sodium slots for up to 96GB memory, 2x48GB DDR5 configuration. There's one M.2 2280 PCIe 4x4 slot up to 2TB storage. The WLAN card is soldered on, but there's an M.2 2242 slot for the WAN module. The 75 watt hour battery is replaceable. This review model has a 14.5 inch WQXGA 2560 x 1600 IPS anti-glare display panel. Brightness is rated at 350 nits, fine for indoor usage or in a shaded area outdoors. It's eye safe and TUV low blue light certified to reduce eye fatigue when using it for long hours. Color accuracy is rated at 100% sRGB, great for light Photoshop or video editing work. Viewing angles are excellent from the 90Hz IPS panel. Generally, the display is good with sharp, clear and crisp text and images, plus the high resolution gives more display space for larger spreadsheets or coding files. The screen bezels are narrower to accommodate the larger 14.5-inch panel over the 14-inch predecessor. The display lid opens 180 degrees flat for optimum viewing angles. Tip: There are optional display options available at the time of purchase. A WXGA 300 nits IPS panel if you want the maximum battery life. A 3K 430 nits 100% DCI P3 display panel if you want color accuracy and a touchscreen version of the display panel we have on review. On the left we have a HDMI 2.1 to 4K 60 Hz, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, 40 gigabits per second, with USB Power Delivery 3.0 and DisplayPort 2.1, one USB Type A, 5 gigabits per second, USB 3.2 Gen 1, always on, and a headphone microphone combo jack 3.5 mm. On the right, we have a Kensington Nano security slot, a gigabit Ethernet RJ45 port, USB Type A, 5 gigabits per second, 3.2 Gen 1, and an optional smart card reader. The WLAN card in Inside is the Intel Wi-Fi 6E, AX211, 2x2 AX, VPro and Bluetooth 5.3 combo card. During testing, wireless connectivity was reliable and quick as you would expect, connected to a Wi-Fi 6E access point. Bluetooth was the same with a reliable connection to an external mouse or speaker. The keyboard is a typical ThinkPad, giving an excellent typing action, making it easily one of the best on the market, meeting the high standards set by its legacy with precise, well-spaced out keys and 1.5mm key travel. When touch typing, the keys have a comfortable dampered tactile feedback with every keystroke. In 2024, it wouldn't be a new device without a Microsoft Copilot key, giving a quick shortcut to the Copilot AI service. There's also the customizable F12 key, offering a shortcut to opening a file, application, website, or folder. The team's core F10 and F11 keys have been replaced by useful shortcuts to the snippet and phone link tools. The three-button track point pointing device and Glasslight Maya Surface Multi-Touch trackpad both work extremely well. The trackpad has a smooth surface for accurate finger gliding and the integrated mouse buttons are not too noisy in use. The track point is handy in tight
right situations that demand it. The Trackpoint Quick Menu optimizes audiovisual settings with just a double tap, offering shortcuts to microphone, battery, voice typing, and audio playback setting. The stereo speakers 2 watts times 2 are tuned by Adobe Audio. They are located under the front edge of the bass unit, firing downwards to bounce the sound ideally from a hard surface. For twin speakers, audio is loud at high volume, but staying refined. Mids and trebles are balanced, making listening to your Spotify playlist or BBC radio channel enjoyable. No surprise, bass is weak. Here are some audio samples. The 5 megapixel webcam with RGB and IR sensors have dual ray microphones and a webcam privacy shutter. Windows Studio FX with AI Dust does a good job with video quality, passable for virtual meetings with your colleagues. Color accuracy is decent under optimum lighting conditions, but fades away when it gets darker or poorer indoor lighting. This review model has an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H based on the Meteor Lake architecture. A total of 16 cores, 6 performance cores running between 1.4 to 4.8 gigahertz, eight efficient calls running between 900 megahertz and 3.8 gigahertz, and two low power efficient calls running between 700 megahertz and 2.5 gigahertz, a total of 22 threads. Processor base power is 28 watts up to 115 watts maximum turbo power. Along with the stick of 32 gigabytes DDR5 5600 megahertz SODIMM, 2 times 16 gigabytes dual channel mode, and a one terabyte SSD M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 performance TLC Opal storage. The P4 S flies through business workflows, software coding, and light 2D and 3D jobs. Tip, if you need more graphical grunt, look at the model with the NVIDIA RTX 500 ADA generation laptop GPU. TGP is rated at 35 watts. This GPU offers CUDA cores, dedicated GPU memory, and MPU for AI processing work, plus ISV certifications for software compatibility. For a performance test, we set the best performance mode in Windows and plugged the laptop into the mainstream testing. Here are the benchmarking results for the ThinkPad P14S Gen 5. Here's a comparison with the HP ZBook Firefly 16G11 with Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and Arc 8 cores. The Intel Core Ultra 7 155H sits just below the AMD Ryzen 7 8840HS and Intel Core i7 1370P and just above the AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS in general benchmarking scores. Using the quick CPU tool plugged in balance mode idle, CPU temperature is around 45 Celsius. CPU Clock speed is around 1.5 to 1.7 gigahertz on the E cores and 2 to 3 gigahertz on the P cores and around 10 to 15 watts CPU power. The fans stay silent at 31.9 decibels. Chassis temperature is at 33 Celsius at the center of the keyboard deck and 34.5 Celsius at the top vents. With video playback balance mode, the Ultra 7 155H doesn't break a sweat at 48 Celsius on average, 1.5 gigahertz on the E cores and 1.7 to 1.9 gigahertz on the P cores. CPU power is on average average 10 watts. The dual fans stay silent at 31.9 decibels and the temperature at the top vents is 33 Celsius and 34 Celsius at the center of the keyboard. Under best performance mode on mains running 3D Mark 10 Time Spy, temperatures hit 38 Celsius by the top vents and 36 Celsius at the center of the keyboard deck. 40.1 decibels with the dual fans constantly spinning but not loud. CPU temperature is 92 Celsius. E cores are around 2.38 gigahertz, P cores around 4.18 gigahertz and and CPU power is around 10 to 30 watts. Set to high performance plugged in running Blender benchmarking, the CPU fluctuates between 2.5 GHz on the E cores to 4 GHz on the P cores on average. CPU temperature is around 100 Celsius and CPU power is constant at 73 to 80 watts. The fans do kick faster and louder up to 52.8 decibels. Temperatures around the top vents are 38 Celsius and 32 Celsius at the center of the keyboard. On battery balance mode video playback, the CPU power is 8 watts on average. Clock speed is 1.5 GHz on the E cores and 1.8 to 2 GHz on the P cores. 
walls and CPU temperature of 47 Celsius. The fans stay virtually silent at 32 decibels constant and chassis temperatures hit 44 Celsius at the most at the centre of the keyboard and 34 Celsius by the vents. Same can be said with running the Blender benchmarking tool under battery mode, best performance. CPU power hits 55 to 60 watts, 2.36 gigahertz on the E cores and 3.33 gigahertz clock speed on the P cores and CPU temperature of 88 Celsius. The dual fans spin up fast with fan noise around 46 decibels at most and temperatures around 35 Celsius by the vents and 34 Celsius by the keyboard deck. Here's a list of the target audience for the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 5. Business power users, software development, medical applications, 3D CAD, data analytics, engineering applications. Inside the P14S is an integrated Intel Arc graphics with eight X cores running at a max dynamic frequency of 2.25 gigahertz based on the XE LPG architecture with eight ray tracing units, eight samplers and four pixel backends. TGP is rated at 28 watts. The Arc eight cores iGPU is just behind the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2050 and on par with the AMD Radeon 780M. Shared GPU memory is 16 gigabytes. Tip, as mentioned earlier, there is a NVIDIA RTX 500 ADA generation 4 gigabits GDDR6 option. The Arc 8 core iGPU delivers a jump up in gaming improvement over the slower Iris XE iGPU predecessor. It's capable of playing modern games at 1080p resolution in low to medium settings. It will struggle, however, with heavy hitters like Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. Here are some gaming samples. Lenovo have provided several security features to keep your data secure. A fingerprint reader on the power button, an optional smart card reader for login authentication, a Kensington Nano security slot, IR camera for Windows Hello, facial recognition, and ultrasonic human presence detection. There's the usual webcam privacy shutter and a discrete TPM 2.0 enabled security encryption chip. The bottom cover has tamper detection if anybody tries to open it. Glance by Mirror Matrix is software that uses eye tracking to enhance your computing experience. It can protect your data from unwanted eyes using presence detection, privacy guard and privacy alert. Inside is a free cell lithium polymer 75 watt hour battery. With video playback full screen balance mode 40% brightness, battery life was 8 to 9 hours. Running PC Mark 10 office productivity testing like a power user, balance mode 40% brightness, battery life was on average 6 hours. With general usage the battery will easily last a full day. Expect around 2 to 3 hours if you run heavy workloads. Included is a 100 watt slim AC adapter. It supports rapid charge, charging up to 80% in one hour. Tip, there are 57 watt hour battery models available, but upgrade to the larger 75 watt hour battery for another 20 pounds if possible at the time of purchase. The good, the bad, and the really bad, solid. The build quality of the P14S is excellent and the device feels very sturdy and premium with the aluminium chassis. It's a tad heavy, but similar to a 14 inch MacBook Pro in weight. Great inputs. The new 1.5mm keyboard is comfortable to type for long hours as you would expect from a ThinkPad. The touchpad could be slightly larger but is smooth to glide your fingers on. Naturally you can switch to the track point in tight spots or if you're wearing gloves. Plenty IOs. 
You can almost guarantee to get a great port selection with the ThinkPad. Two Thunderbolt 4s, two USB Type-A ports, HDMI, and a rare but useful RJ45 Ethernet port, upgradable. It's good to see Lenovo offer upgrade options for the memory, up to 96GB and an M.2 SSD slot. Nitpicking, but could the engineers cram in another SSD slot for additional storage? No WAN. At the time of this review, there's no configurable option for 4G LTE or even 5G connectivity. Why not utilize this wasted space on an additional SSD or beefier GPU? Weak GPU. The Intel Arc is a useful iGPU and an optional entry-level RTX 500 ADA is more powerful than the older RTX A500 found in the HP ZBook Firefly 16 G11 I reviewed a few weeks back. However, with its thicker dimensions, why didn't Lenovo offer the RTX 1000 ADA considering this is a mobile workstation? Expensive? If you don't need ISV certification, most decent multimedia or creator laptops have better performance for the money, especially as the base model starts from £1,210 or $1,568 before taxes, all the way up to £1,666 or $2,161. If you were in the market for a 14-inch mobile workstation, what other laptops would you be looking at? In no particular order, here's some to consider. Dell Position 3490 2024 HP ZBook Firefly 14 G11 Lenovo Yoga Pro 7 Gen 9 AMD Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2 Apple MacBook Pro 14 Asus ZenBook 14 OLED UM3406 Huawei MateBook X Pro 2024 MSI Prestige 14 AI Evo C1M Acer Travelmate P614 Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 5 This review began with a Lenovo 40% off flash sale of £791 or $1026 before taxes for this review model of the P14S Gen 5. Naturally, I had to buy one as I love a bargain. For the money, you get a sturdy built like a tank quality. The thicker case allows for upgradable memory and storage, which is a thumbs up to Lenovo. The comfortable ThinkPad keyboard is excellent to type on and plenty of ports to shake a tree. The Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and Arc 8 Core IGP offers generally good performance and there is the option of the NVIDIA RTX 500 ADA generation. However, if you need more GPU performance, you have to jump up to the 16-inch models like the P16V Gen 2 or the P16 Gen 2 Cousins instead. Of course, the P14S is also at home as a corporate laptop aimed at users who want practicality and performance over substance. If you can grab a P14S at a bargain price like I did, it's an absolute steal. However, at its full retail price, the ThinkPad is is in an ultra competitive space where your money can go a long way elsewhere. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and discuss below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review of the Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 5 mobile workstation. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this review video and subscribe if you would like to watch more of our tech videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.